So now we will see how we can take the user input using read line in JavaScript. So as you can see, we have this take user input.js file in this case. Now guys, what we will do is simply we need to import the module that is read line. So over here, we will provide a constant that is read line in this case, it is equal to and in order to import the module, we need to provide the require keyword over here followed by open and close parenthesis inside which we need to provide the module name inside the single or the double quotes in this case so guys basically we are going to provide the module name that is read line and guys this particular line of code is very important so that we can make use of this read line module when we are running the javascript programs using node.js now guys over here what we have to do is read line is having one of the functions that is create interface in order to get the interface by using which we can take the user input from the console over here so guys what we will do is simply we will provide the read line that is the constant that we have defined over here followed by dot and then we have something called as create interface as you can see the read line create interface method creates a new read line interface instance over here which we need to catch by using another constant so you can see the usage of this create interface over here that is provided by vs code in this case so guys let us use this create interface which is going to take the object as the parameter as you can see this is the open and close curly braces over here and inside this we have the input and the output properties over here so guys let us use this create interface in this case and let us create the object inside the open and close curly braces we have to provide the first property that is input so you can see that the usage is already provided over here you can simply copy paste from this particular suggestion from vs code or else you can type manually as well so in this case we provide input colon followed by the process and then followed by dot we have the standard input over here so guys basically this process also is the inbuilt variable inside the node.js in this case as you can see so simply we can use the process followed by dot and the standard input within the process so guys over here we need to provide comma and then we also have to provide the output as well so guys basically what we are telling the read line over here is we need to take the input from the standard input that is from the terminal over here when the user is providing the input in this case and also we need to provide the output to the terminal as well and that is the functionality of providing these two properties within the create interface method so guys over here we need to provide process followed by dot and then we have the standard output in this case that is std out so guys basically this is the way in order to create the interface and then we need to assign it to another constant over here so simply we will say constant rl in this case which stands for read line over here now guys we can simply use this object that is rl in order to take the user input and also provide provide the output on the terminal so guys let us check that how we can do it so basically we can provide rl followed by there are multiple methods within this rl object that we can use so one of the methods that we are going to use is question over here so simply when we provide the object name that is rl followed by dot you can see that there are multiple methods and properties that are provided in this case so simply we are going to provide the question method over here so as you can see the rl.question method displays the query by writing it to the output which means it will be written on the terminal and waits for the user input to be provided on input over here so guys input is also terminal in this case and then it invokes the callback function passing the provided input as the first argument so guys let us see the working of this rl.question method in this case so basically we need to select this particular method that is question over here and since it is a method we need to provide open and close parenthesis in this case and then as you can see the first parameter will be a string so guys you can provide the prompt to the user based on which the user will provide any of the details that you are asking for so guys let us ask the user what is the first name so simply we will say what is your first name followed by 
hyphen over here and then after this user will be asked to provide the input on the terminal so guys how do we handle that particular input that will be coming by the user simply we need to provide the callback function as the second parameter to this question method so guys this is the first parameter that is string followed by comma and then you can see that we have the callback function and then it is going to take the input from the user as the parameter so guys over here let us simply provide the callback function by using the function keyword and then we need to provide open and close parenthesis over here and simply we will say first name in this case so guys basically whatever input is provided by the user after this particular prompt it will be stored inside the first name variable which we can use later on to complete our task so guys basically after this open and close parenthesis within which we have provided the first name we need to provide the body of the callback function so simply we provide open and close curly braces over here and then we can make use of this first name in order to display on the terminal so let us provide the console.log statement over here and then we will say your first name is and then followed by dollar symbol and then simply we can make use of this variable that is first name over here so guys this is the way we can provide the prompt on the terminal and ask the user to provide the required input and store that particular input inside the variable and use that particular variable to further process the required lines of code over here so guys let me just save this file now and try running this code on the terminal over here so we provide the node command followed by the name of the javascript file so when we press enter as you can see what is your first name let us provide programming as the input from the user so as you have seen we have provided programming as the input when we press enter over here you can see that your first name is programming so guys this is a very simple way in order to take the user input by using the read line module that is provided as the inbuilt module by node.js in javascript now guys if you notice again on the third line it is expecting some input over here and we can type anything in this case now guys we don't want this particular thing to happen so what we can do is we have something called as rl.close method which we need to close over here so guys when we provide rl.question and then provide certain prompt string in order to ask the user input basically it is opening the connection in order to get the user input from the terminal now guys it is our responsibility in order to close that particular connection that allows the user to provide the user input in this case and how we can do that simply by using the rl object over here followed by dot and then as you can see we have this close method this method closes the interface instance and relinquishes control over the input and output streams when called the close event will be emitted so guys basically it is going to close the input and the output that we had started by using the create interface method over here so let me just provide the close in this case followed by the open and close parenthesis since it is a method so let me just save this file now now when we provide any user input it will display this particular output and then we will be getting this particular path by default so guys let me just provide provide control c over here and let me just run this code once again so what is your first name let us say we have programming and then when we press enter as you can see your first name is programming and then we have this default path that is getting printed over here in order to run the code once again or run any other code in this case so guys it is very important that you provide the close method over here in order to close the prompt in this case now guys by default when we are going to provide any input after this prompt the data type of that particular variable will be string so even if we provide any of the numbers over here the type of this particular the first name will be string over here so let us check that as well so when we say and type it is equal to followed by dollar symbol and inside the open and close curly braces we will use type of in this case so guys basically type of can be used in order to check the data type of any variable so we will say type of and then first name over here so when we save this file now and try running this code on the terminal once again so as you can see what is your first name let me just provide the programming as the first name it says that your first name is programming and type is equal to string let us provide certain number over here so what is your first name let us provide 1 2 3 as the input and when we press enter 
as you can see your first name is one two three and type is still string over here so guys when you are dealing with certain numbers that is provided by the users so what we can do is simply we need to convert that particular input into the integer explicitly by using the percent method so guys we will check that in the upcoming videos as well when we are going to deal with the user inputs that need numbers to be entered by the user now guys this is as far as the first name of the user is concerned what if you want the second name of the user to be asked over here on the terminal so in that case what you have to do is after asking the first question and then providing this particular callback function and then inside this callback function we need to call the rl object once again followed by dot and then we have the question method over here and then once again you need to provide the other question that is what is your last name followed by hyphen and then once again you need to provide the callback function this time so guys over here the callback function will take the parameter that is last name over here so guys basically the first name will be stored inside the variable that is first name and inside this first callback function we have the second question that what is your last name and this particular last name that is the second input will be stored inside the last name variable and then guys we are going to have the content of this callback function within which which we need to provide the first name and the last name variables based on our usage so guys over here let me just cut this lines of code and paste this inside the second callback function so this is the way you can provide multiple questions that is multiple prompts and ask the user to provide different inputs so let us print the first name and the last name over here so simply we will say welcome followed by the first name and the last name so Simply we are printing first name followed by last name over here and we are greeting this particular person. So let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal. So as you can see we have got the first question what is your first name. So let us say we provide John as the first name and then when we press enter as you can see what is your last name. So we can simply provide another input that is do in this case as the last name. So when we press enter. As you can see we are getting welcome John Doe in this case. So guys in this way you can provide multiple questions or the multiple prompts in order to ask the user to provide their different inputs. So guys this is as far as taking user input is concerned from the terminal by using the standard input and the standard output over here. Comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video. Please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notification notifications on upcoming videos as well. I'll see you in the next video in which we are going to talk about how to display the multiplication table in JavaScript. So stay tuned.